Where did Inter and AC Milan play prior to moving to their iconic San Siro Stadium? Well, they actually played at another iconic stadium, one whose history goes back to the days of Napoleon, resembles an ancient Roman chariot racing circuit, and it's still standing to this day. Inter's early history and glory is more closely tied to the stadium, but Milan played there for a time as well, and the Italian national team's first ever match was played there. Its name, Arena Civica, a stadium that looks as though it was frozen in time. Both Milan clubs can trace their roots back to it, but it's safe to say that it's deeply tied to Italian football's beginnings. Now, before we get to the football side of things, it's important to know how this stadium came to exist in the first place. Back in the late 1700s and early 1800s, yes, we're going back that far, as Napoleon Bonaparte was kicking ass and taking names, aka conquering most of modern day Europe, he had conquered much of Italy by the time 1799 had come around. He declared what is mainly modern day Northern Italy, here, see for yourself for clarity, as the Kingdom of Italy in May of 1805, the Napoleonic Kingdom, of course. Prior to that, it was the Italian Republic, of which he was the president. He upgraded himself from president to king. He gained a lot of experience points in his conquests and focused on the king skill tree, I guess. Too bad he couldn't use them on height. Am I right? Now, where did he make this announcement official? Based on the title and theme of this video, I'm sure you'll never guess, so I'll help you out. He did it in Milan at the Duomo to be exact, as the little man put the large iron crown of Lombardy on his head. With that business out of the way, Napoleon said to his homies, look, I like this city, but we need to build a place where we can have some sick live events like chariot races and naval battles. And with that, we can also spruce up this area of town near Castello Sforzesco. So, the Arena del Foro Bonaparte was built with great influence from Rome's Circus Maximus and inaugurated in 1807 with military parades and chariot races for Napoleon to enjoy. As you can see, it still looks kind of ancient to this day. By the way, that mention of naval battles, pretty common in amphitheaters or coliseums like this where they would flood the center and battle it out. They say that even some sea animals were brought in. Rumors say a whale, but in all likelihood, according to historians, it was just a dolphin. I mean, I say just a dolphin as if that isn't crazy either. Have you seen where Milan is? That's pretty crazy, man, bringing in dolphins at that time. Now, of course, Napoleon's reign ended just nine years after it began in Italy. He was old news in 1814, done and dusted by 1815, but the Arena del Foro Bonaparte lived on. Not yet as a football arena, of course, because football didn't exist yet but it was used as a skating rink in the winter for boxing matches, extravagant parties. In 1870, the city of Milan acquired it and renamed it the Arena Civica. Now for football, we got to jump ahead a century from when this thing was first built. Football spread like the plague, no like the coronavirus across the globe in the late 1800s and early 1900s, and Italy was no exception. Now, of course, we already have a video that covers the founding of both AC Milan and Inter Milan as part of our Roots of the Rivalry series here on the channel, so I won't go too deep into that foundational history of each of the clubs. However, AC Milan played the very first football match in this stadium against none other than Medio Medi Mediolanum. Mediolanum. Who are, who are they? Well, they ceased their football team in 1904, as far as I can tell. So you would be excused for not knowing of a team that stopped their operations 120 years ago. I won't judge you. The sports club of Mediolanum continued, just not the football team, as many of the players left for other Milan clubs like US Milanese. Why am I still talking about these guys? That's not what this video is focused on. God. <laughs> But the first football match played in the Arena Civica was between AC Milan and Mediolanum, a derby on May 25th, 1900. Days later, AC Milan hosted Juventus and beat them to win the Medal of the King. Before moving to the San Siro, Milan would play matches in Arena Civica now and then. This stadium is also where the Italian national team played their first ever international match. That occurred on May 15th, 1910, with Italy defeating France 6-2, absolutely smashed them at the Arena Civica. Two years prior to that match, however, a club named Football Club Internazionale was born, Brothers of the World, as they called themselves, and for the first 20 years or so of their existence, they would frequently play matches at the Arena Civica, namely their biggest matches because of that larger capacity. 
Inter's main base of operations in their early years was Campo di Ripa, Ticinese, but they would later move on to Campo Via Goldoni, which would be their home stadium for about 17 years from 1913 to 1930. However, as noted by gentleman ultra rider at Calcio England, these grounds had issues with flooding, and on days where the pitch was a bit moist, when it was soaking, they would move their matches over to Arena Civica, sort of becoming their second home in a sense. Milan would do the same now and then, but upon the opening of the San Siro in 1926, like I said, they didn't really have a need for it. Besides one stint in the 1940s, but we won't go too deep into that. However, at Via Goldoni on the 15th of June 1930, Ambrosiana, which was one of the names Inter would go by for a time before switching to Internazionale again, was playing against Genoa in what was an integral match in the league. Ambrosiana, I'm just going to call them Inter for simplicity's sake, Inter were leading the league and Genoa were trying to catch up to them. Prior to the match, the wooden grandstand collapsed, injuring about 167 people and hospitalizing 30. From that point onward, Inter began playing all of their matches at the Arena Civica, as it became their permanent home. For a time, at least. But while at the Arena Civica, Inter won a few titles. As mentioned, they would play their biggest matches at the Arena Civica, even while Goldoni was their home, including the 1919-1920 season, 1929-30 season, the season of the grandstand collapse, until they moved in permanently in the 1930-31 season. It was here where the legendary Giuseppe Miazza played for Inter in the late 20s and throughout the 1930s, scoring most of his Inter goals in this stadium, winning the Scudetto in the 37-38 season, as well as the 39-40 season. They also won a Coppa Italia there as well in 1939. But when you think of 1939, what comes to mind first? Now, as mentioned, AC Milan had a stint where they played at the Arena Civica in 1941, but by the time 1947 had rolled around, both of the Milan Giants were playing their home matches at the San Siro. There had been some damages to Arena Civica from the war, and the capacity of 10,000 wasn't enough to accommodate Inter's growing fan base in Milan. However, Inter didn't completely ditch their old home that they had loved so much. In fact, they would continue to train at the Arena Civica for a time and would even play matches there now and then, the most notable of which being a Fairs Cup match against Lyon in 1958, of which Inter won 7 0. Today, the stadium still gets some use, but just not for football mostly. At least not as frequently, but there was a Milan derby played in Arena Civica just last year. In November of 2023, the women's sides from Inter and AC Milan faced off, and quite poetically, the Inter women won. Of course they did. There's that magic dust there for them. So while the stadium now sees far more athletic events and concerts than it does football, it still remains tied to not just the city of Milan's earliest football history, but to that of the Italian national team and Italian football in general. Definitely a stadium that I want to check out if ever I'm back in Italy. And by the way, guys, I'm thinking this could turn into a series where I go into the history of the stadiums that your favorite teams played at before they moved to their current spots, before the Bernabeu, before the Allianz Arena. I think that could be fun. I love that intersection of history and sport, so I think I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. And if you enjoyed this content, then a like would really help out on the channel. And subscribe for more if you were that enthralled by this. My name's Adrian. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. <laughs>